Hi there, everyone. Here we're talking about the greenhouse effect. Uh, the greenhouse effect is, of course, the effect that is observed in greenhouses. It's a glass house, basically, that farmers use to raise the temperature for their plants or crops they're trying to grow without having to use a lot of extra electricity. So sunlight goes into the glass and it actually gets trapped inside all well, the heat does and so the temperature uh, starts to get higher and higher. So we refer to the greenhouse effect when talking about global temperatures getting higher as well and the human contribution to the greenhouse effect as well. Alright, so we're going to take a look at this uh, BBC animation. I'll include a link to it, but uh, I'll switch over so you can check it out. So take a look right down here. Uh, the greenhouse effect, energy from the sun comes down and it hits the earth. This little light line here represents the earth's atmosphere basically. A lot of that heat gets uh, reflected back, but a lot of it gets absorbed by the oceans and the land. And when it bounces off the land, uh, a lot of it gets re-reflected as longer wave infrared radiation. And the thing is that certain gases in our atmosphere can actually absorb those longer wavelengths of radiation and uh, basically re-emit that as heat basically so the it's almost like a sponge soaking up the energy and kind of sending it back down towards the earth or keeping it within the atmosphere instead of allowing it to escape back into outer space um, carbon dioxide big culprit and that's the main one that we're talking about there are other greenhouse gases as well too um, but it's important to understand that the greenhouse effect is something that we actually need so to summarize basically the energy comes in it's re-emitted as longer wavelength infrared radiation and certain gases can absorb this energy into their bonds and then put it back out into the atmosphere re-emitting it and so that's what's causing increased uh, temperatures over time as we have more and more carbon dioxide around as well too okay here's a simple form a simple way to look at it actually so another diagram you can check it out pause the video it is a natural phenomenon so this is something that happens if it didn't happen it would be super duper cold and we'd all be dead so we need it to be there the important thing is to understand is that what we're worried about is not the greenhouse effect itself but the enhanced greenhouse effect so it's made worse by the extra stuff that we're putting into the atmosphere through carbon dioxide uh, burning fossil fuels and all kinds of chemical factory processes that are putting extra gases um, into the air so that's what I've said a few times so you can put that down as well too here's a quick question take a look pause it I'm gonna give the answer in three two all right hope you got that right Here's another one. I'm not going to give you the answer to this, so please make sure you get this question. Uh, quiz yourself really quick. Yeah, one we'll pause. One more question. Same thing as well. Consequence of the greenhouse effect. We're going to talk about this in a second, but just to see if you can figure out what an answer is before we get to it. Graphs show these changes. A lot of evidence has been accumulated. People were worried. They saw, hmm, carbon dioxide levels seem to be increasing. Global temperature levels seem to be increasing. Is there a correlation or is there some kind of cause and effect? Remember, the difference between correlation and causation. Uh, very, very tricky, fine line. But there seems to be a lot of evidence to help us see a strong link between carbon dioxide levels and uh, atmospheric global temperature global temperature levels as well too so you can see there is some there's fluctuations every within a year even but overall the entire pattern is showing uh, an increase and this is global temperatures the last graph is showing carbon dioxide levels and other graphs that are showing changes this is over hundred this is over thousands hundreds of thousands of years and this is over uh, just within about a century you can take a look at this as well Climate change, intergovernmental panel posted this, so make sure to check that out as well too. Okay, the carbon cycle, understanding how this all fits together, your, your textbook has a good uh, diagram of this, and there's thousands of different diagrams about the carbon cycle, but um, we're going to break it down like this, so try to follow along. The point is not to memorize this cycle, the point is to understand 
think about it logically, starting from carbon. Where is carbon found? Well, let's start with in the air, carbon dioxide in the air. We need it there. It does trap some of the heat, but it allows us to have a relatively stable uh, global temperature levels, basically, so we can allow life to keep on going. Um, so what happens to carbon dioxide in the air? So let's follow this around quick, quickly around here. Uh, let me get my highlighter. Okay. Carbon dioxide in the air okay, is there as a result of, well, a few processes. We'll see in a second, but let's start with carbon dioxide in the air. So where can that, what can, what can use that? Well, follow this path here. Here's a little plant. Plant does photosynthesis. We're going to click on that in a second here. There's a, it says inorganic carbon in organic compounds and producers. That's basically glucose. It's a product of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide gets converted to glucose. That glucose in plants gets stored as starch, and cows and animals can eat those plants. Other animals can eat those other animals. So eventually, that glucose gets transferred uh, to other types of things that are eating animals. So that's carbon in organic compounds. We're talking about glucose in consumers and everything can die so there's this line going here from the plants to dying uh, and whoops from the line and consumers also dying and then you have mushrooms and bacteria which are saprotrophs they're basically breaking the organic compounds down and then returning it as carbon dioxide uh, back to the air via this path or things Getting broken down can be fossilized, can become fossilized, and that's how fossil fuels were formed. Unfortunately, that process takes millions and millions of years, so we can't really like start over and just cram a bunch of things at really high pressures. Things were buried under lots of rocks, really high pressure, long, long time. That sounded weird. Anyways, continue. That's carbon in fossil fuels. We like it. We burn it, make our cars move, makes the atmosphere stinky and stuff like that, but it allows our cars to move and other things, but it does put carbon dioxide back into the air. So let's see, let's name some of these processes. Whoops. Uh -huh. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Um, when there's forest fires, the plants, combustion, you burn. The same, like, same thing with over here. You're burning fossil fuels, puts carbon dioxide back into the air. Oh, that's really annoying. I'm about to break something. Here we go. What else do we have? <laughs> Feeding. When animals are eating each other, that's putting carbon into other organisms. Uh, death. Cell respiration. Let's talk about that really quickly. Cell respiration. All living things do cell respiration. Yeah, I think that's right. So... Me, I'm doing cell respiration. So I had some glucose, I'm breathing in oxygen, and it's being converted in my cells, my mitochondria. I'm making energy for myself, and I'm exhaling or producing carbon dioxide, and then exhaling it. So the carbon dioxide gets returned back to the air. So uh, animals are doing cell respiration. In fact, most all of these things are doing cell respiration. Don't forget about plants, though. Plants are also doing cell respiration. So they are also using some of the uh, glucose that they're producing as well, too. Okay, very good. Saprotrophs and fungi are also doing that. So take this in. You can kind of you can you can sketch this out. Just starting with carbon dioxide. Start anywhere you want. Start with animals. Be like, hey, where does carbon go from an animal that's inside my muscles and stuff like that? Well, if a lion eats me, they get carbon. So on and so forth. You can reason it out. It's not something to memorize. You can kind of reason it out. So take a look at this question. Pause the video. More graphs. Take a look. Okay, something really important called the precautionary principle. The precautionary principle, it can kind of be linked to TOK. This could be a whole like in-class debate and everything like that. Um, read through this. And in simple terms, what we're saying is if we're not certain about what the results of our behavior, something that we do is going to be, uh, the people who want the change should prove that it will not be harmful. So this is different from, oops, this is different from the, rev the normal situation where those who are concerned about the change would have to prove that it will do harm in order to prevent such changes. Think of how this applies to like the tobacco industry, people selling cigarettes. 
whose job is it? Is it the tobacco makers to prove that their cigarettes are not doing any harm or uh, people who are, are opposed to it as well? Okay. So as applied to the greenhouse effect, if you're not sure of the exact effects of increasing carbon dioxide, if you apply this principle, this is what we've done or people have done. The Kyoto Protocol, um, a bunch of countries agreed to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that, that their country produces carbon emissions, okay, or boycott trade. Uh, this, like I said, this is a debate. So this can be there are moral and ethical consequences of this one. If you look at the bottom left right here, poorer countries don't yet have really cool technologies that can keep their productivity high while lowering the amount of pollution they're putting into the air. Sometimes the cheapest technology to start making some products for your country is the dirtiest technology as well, too. So if you start banning people from putting limits on the carbon dioxide they can produce, well, then if you have no choice as a poorer country, then you just have to stop your, your productivity. And now you become even more poor and even more reliant on other countries to provide you with basic necessities and things like that. Okay, so that could cause further problems. So that's something to discuss. This could be the basis for a theory of knowledge essay as well. Uh, this is taken from your biology syllabus. So see how that applies here. See how the um, IB approaches this idea. Another question. This could show up as an essay. Think about it, try it out, and come back and visit this video. Um, take a look. These are things that you should make sure to include in your essay. And finally, we move on to what if global temperatures rise? So if you've ever watched An Inconvenient Truth, that was a nice, you know, hour and a half summary of um, kind of the evidence that points towards global warming actually being a problem. In fact, most scientists all agree. And although if you look, you know, search the Internet for opinions on this, you'll see a very wide ranging wide range of opinions on whether this is actually a problem. But if you look at all most of the scientific sources, um, they all are all agreeing that we need to do something to prevent uh, enhancing this natural greenhouse effect. Cute little polar bears. All right, so polarized caps shrink. Well, like, why is that a problem? OK, we'll, we'll talk, get back to that in a little second. Uh, think about the Earth, right? Think about the Earth. Um, it's really warm by the equator, cold at the poles. If global temperatures rise, well, the band of kind of warmer areas will expand a little bit. And previously, there were limits to how far certain animals could go, right? They can stay in this area because it gets too cold up there, too cold down there. Well, if it starts to get warmer, now they can start moving further. And if they start moving further, then rats and rodents and pests and mosquitoes and insects start moving further as well, too. So now you have malaria starting to affect areas that never had to worry about malaria before because the temperatures were too cold. So that could be a problem. Um, you're snowboarding or skiing and you forget your goggles or your glasses and you come back after a day of skiing and your eyes hurt and you feel really, really sunburned. Well, it's because that snow acted as a big mirror that was reflecting all the sun rays back up into your face. And so really, really bright and then adding more heat. So snow and ice naturally reflects heat back into outer space. If you remove this giant mirror, then more of the heat is actually going to stay. So it's like a positive feedback loop here. Here's another example of positive feedback. Get this, get this down, write down the word positive feedback. Okay, permafrost. Uh, it's a layer of soil that remains frozen throughout the year. So this is, here's, if here's the earth, permafrost is, of course, it's not going to be where it's really hot. That would all just melt. But where it's normally just cold enough, so this layer of soil stays frozen. Um, well, what happens is inside that soil, there's a lot of detri detritus, detritus. Different people say it different ways, I think. Don't get me busted. All right. Um, anyways, there's lots of dead particulate matter that's living there. And then, so what happens is if it melts, if that layer melts, you're going to release any kind of byproducts of those things into the atmosphere and methane happens to be something that gets re-released and methane happens to be another greenhouse gas like carbon dioxide so you well, let me think here more carbon dioxide goes into the atmosphere causes global temperatures to rise global temperatures rise causing permafrost to melt the permafrost melts releasing methane methane 
acts like carbon dioxide causes global temperatures to continue rising so you see it's a feedback effect and this could potentially cause problem to speed up faster and faster and faster species migrating we talked about that uh oh i talked about spread of pathogens earlier over here on the left um, but species could be moving to different habitats if the temperatures get too hot or too cold that could throw off any kind of ecosystem right ecosystem requires balance of all the prey and the predators and um and all the abiotic factors around too so you don't want to mess with that polar bears have to swim further don't need to say anymore sad here's another question you see it bye bye